Today is going to be a really interesting crypto news video. So straight at the bat, I'm telling you, watch this video all the way through because there's so much news, there's so much going on, and my voice is completely wrecked. But I can't leave you guys like that. How can you call yourself a crypto person if you're not properly informed? That's the way I think about it. So I'm still going to get you guys everything. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We've got Binance returning to Japan, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Over in Japan, another exchange just shut down. So Binance, they, they didn't want to let that slide. So they're heading over back into Japan. And the way I always see it is that means more crypto adoption. So that's a very good thing. Apparently over in the US, Congress is clashing over plumbing of crypto markets. And the idea there is pretty simple. Right now, over the last couple of days, it's become quite apparent that in the US, there's two very vastly different ideas as to how to address the gaps in digital asset regulation. And there's not one good way to necessarily do it, but over in the US, they're quite lackluster, they're quite lacking, and it's not helping that from a central authority perspective, not anybody is coming to a, a proper conclusion. And the thing is, if you can't come to a proper conclusion up above, yeah, the people below can't follow it completely at all. Anyway, it doesn't really help that everywhere, the amount of manipulation of all these stories, like for example, with Silicon Valley Bank and with a couple of other major banks, they're, they're all blaming it on crypto, misinforming the people even more. Again, remember the whole SVB thing. It's not a crypto problem, it's a banking problem. And right here it says as well, the actual official congressional report now, right, a little, a little while later, says that crypto didn't actually cause bank runs. A fear of exposure did. And the fun thing, ah, fun, what do you call fun, right? I mean, I'd rather be doing something else on my Friday than talking about fear of uh, exposure. But no, in all seriousness, it's a really big problem the way I personally see it, that they're calling all this a crypto issue. Again, if you've not been up to date, all those major banks, again, I almost want to say crypto banks because that's the way that people saw them because those were nice to crypto. Those banks were quite friendly. They call it a crypto problem. And that's probably how a lot of regulators are looking at it too because they just don't know. But now the reports are coming on in that that officially wasn't the case and that all this narrative that's been spun around yeah, it was just plain wrong. On a side note, I want to keep informing you that the FOMC meeting is coming up. And I'm going to be live streaming it. It's happening in four days from now. Nah, about four and a half days to be exact. And at that event, if you do not know, we always have crazy volatility for Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, you name it, as they're going to be deciding the interest rate is going to be announced. And honestly, you always want to be there. Sometimes there are some crazy trading opportunities. I'm not a financial advisor, but... Let me just tell you that if you make the right call, there's a juicy amount of money to be made. And we almost are already certain that there is going to be yet another rate hike because they've basically been confirming in the media that it's going to continue like that for at least the entirety of this year. A uh, complete side note yet again, Coinbase just came out with an official response. You can see it right there. Coinbase response to the SEC's Wells Notice full video. Long story short about that one is the SEC a little while ago went after Coinbase. Very big deal, very big fear. And obviously Coinbase didn't properly reply just quite yet. They did go up to the SEC and actually sue them to get some answers as to what their thoughts are on crypto and a couple of things in that field. But this was basically their response to, uh, to the SEC asking them questions about their stake in. And it was basically not a lawsuit, but a we're going to probably sue you if you don't clarify things, so to speak. And he basically just explains why they were set up in the US, why they were not really doing anything wrong, and why they were working with the ropes that were dealt to him and with the cards that were dealt to them, as for the most part, it's the SEC that's doing some shady things right here, not really Coinbase. Anyway, that's pretty cool. But even cooler is that the former FTX boss, Ryan Salami, Sal Salami, Salome, whatever's house just got raided by the FBI. So yeah, yesterday, all right, they came over to Ryan's house. He was the former CEO of FTX Bahamas, which is a subsidiary. Long story short is we don't know exactly what they were doing in terms of the reason, etc. We do know, however, that he also was donating massive amounts of money, $23 million to Republican candidates and political action committees. So there probably was some shady stuff going on with him too. They also call him a central player in all the scandal of FTX. And I sometimes wonder, What's eventually going to happen to Sam Bankman Freed? I mean, if he's at fault is a different question. It's not what I'm asking here. I mean, is he actually going to go to jail, you guys think? Comment it down below. Do you think Sam Bankman Freed is going to go to jail? And also, guys, if you're enjoying these daily crypto videos, make sure you press that like button. Also, I wonder if you guys are, you know, if you guys are into Polygon. I love Polygon. Here over in Consensus, I'm right now in Austin, Texas. For you guys, if you don't uh, 
already know that i'm at a crypto event right here they just announced at consensus right here a partnership between polygon zk evm scaling performance well that's a, a little mouthful basically a partnership between google cloud and polygon to make it even better to kind of simplify this for the people google cloud here has a google cloud computing service provider and then when you officially partner up well you've got new tools in your domain you've got new possibilities as it's faster cheaper and i don't want to get too technical but they're basically going to be running a lot of zero knowledge proofs if you don't know what they are just look it up for a little second it's the hottest thing right now I'll give you guys a little airdrop tutorial for starkware right well we can be sitting here for another day or two talking about all these zero knowledge things but i, I might just have to make a video about it at some point because that stuff is really cool i've also been thinking of just to to make Maybe get some of these spearheads onto the channel to let them explain it all but yeah, i'm looking into it anyway some people are also pretty excited about ripple ripple provides insight into xrp sec legal battle in latest update well yeah they just went out with another markets report they do that every every now and then brad gollinghouse basically had this to say the us may be moving backwards but i like to focus on the positive which i always appreciate you know you can sit here for days talk about all these negative things but at the end of the day it's about the positive things right which is why i always recommend you guys to press that like button and not the dislike button that's basically it <laughs> all right um but in the last few months the EU, UK, and UAE all moved forward with new regulatory frameworks and regimes for crypto activities, and you can read the market report. Obviously, I took a little bit of a look, and I think they always launched this at the end of the first month after the quarter, and you can see the Q1 2023 XRP markets report is now live. I've not fully gone over it because it's not that crazy all of a sudden. It does make you realize just how fast time goes. I mean, I remember just reading Q4's report from last year, and all of a sudden you notice, damn, it's freaking the end of April. It's like almost like we're back at the, the half year point. Guys, I'm getting old. Anyway, the market report is live, detailing important events in crypto and the broader financial markets in Q1, global regulatory progress, a vibrant community building on the XP Ledger, and the latest technical updates on the XP Ledger. And I think the coolest part about it is indeed the regulation idea, or perhaps the proposed interoperability standards for XRP. If you do not know, this would enable users to transfer digital assets and data between blockchains, regardless of the underlying protocol or programming language. Again, that could be a very interesting new proposal. All right, it, it is already a proposal. It could be a very new, cool implementation. So let's see about that shortly. You can take a look at all the XRP Ledger on-chain data if that's something you're interested in. But I'd say the most cool part about that is the fact that there are so ridiculously many new people coming out to the XRP Ledger. So many new wallets being created. And again, it just proves it's an ever-growing system, huh? We've got some additional cool stuff like Taiwan here allowing uh, or at least going to allow traditional banks to offer crypto trading services. Kind of similar to Hong Kong. They're taking a, a couple of steps in that regard. Also, I've been meeting a couple of the best guys here over in Austin, Texas. And yes, if you do not know, I do not wear shoes. You cannot see them in my hands right there because I've sold them for more crypto and that's the way to go about it. By the way, you know, don't look at that unless you're going to send me money. You know, I, I don't sell feet picks for free. Other cool news is that MasterCard just partnered up with Sol uh, Sol Solana, Polygon, Ava, and others to launch a crypto credential system. Not necessarily sure I'm, you know, happy about that. It was against, uh, again, announced here over at Consensus. I've actually been getting a lot of alpha, you know, like reading it on the internet is so different than actually hearing it in real life. The reason I say I'm not so sure I'm happy with that is because they only chose a couple of partners. And by the way, I don't know what Ava is. It says you're Avon. We know a little while ago they were talking about them getting into multiple partners and that they're still bullish on this crypto stuff, but... Yeah, I sometimes wonder exactly what all that means. Other interesting part, CFTC just fined a South African CEO $3.4 billion over a Bitcoin MLM scheme. Don't want to get too deep into that. Just know if you're doing shady sh stuff, they will eventually come after you. So remember that. Apparently, there was also an issue with the protocol OVIX over on Polygon. About $2 million were lost. So just reporting whenever things get hacked as well for if you were involved. And sometimes people don't check their wallets too often, right? Or they might not check. They might not know. So I got to give you guys those updates as well. And last but not least, I'm not sure if I said this at the start. The SEC issued a cease and desist order to CoinMe. They basically settled for, uh, at least, there's a settlement offer thrown on the table by CoinMe for about $4 million. They had an ICO back in 2017 where they raised 3.6 million and i guess these guys knew they were in the wrong otherwise you probably wouldn't settle like come on fight it if you know you were in the right but yeah i think that's about it for today's little crypto video because uh i think my laptop is uh is, is getting empty anyway that was it for today's little crypto update hopefully you guys all enjoyed it hopefully it was uh it was okay the voice is messed up so i try to still cook something up but it's not perfect tomorrow no in two days though i'll be back home and get you guys the studio quality level stuff so uh, stick around for that and i'll see you guys again in another crypto video hopefully tomorrow